If I asked you what was common between these very illustrious names, what would you say? Mr. Kumar Mangalam Birla, Mr. Motilal Oswal, Mr. Suresh Prabhu, Mr. Shekhar Kapoor, Mr. Piyush Goel, Rakesh Junjunwala. What do you think is common between these people from very diverse walks of life and professions? Two letters, two simple letters C and A. Two letters so powerful that if you join them and put them before a name, it not only becomes a professional qualification, but it represents willpower, dedication, intelligence, and the ability to march on come what may. To the rest of the world, these two letters mean chartered accountant. But to me, it means something completely different. Committed achievers. Let me tell you a story about a committed achiever. A young girl was wrongly prescribed penicillin for a common cold. What happened was that she became visually impaired. A nine-year-old became blind. She decided to become a chartered accountant. Her name was Rajni Gopal. So what if she was visually impaired? The world may think of it as a handicap. But she did not. In another story, the daughter of a man who sold coffee outside Burivali railway station on a bicycle decides to learn English in the seventh standard. And she fails, tries again, fails again. She goes on to become a chartered accountant. Did she ever think that language would be a barrier? She did not. Did she ever think that her financial status would be a barrier? She did not. All she wanted to do was become a chartered accountant, a committed achiever. The only place where achievement comes before commitment is in the dictionary. It was this commitment to achieve that led to the formation of this organization that would change the economic structure of this country forever. ICAI. The Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. The leaders of this nation were visionaries. They knew the role chartered accountants would play in developing the country. Which is why on the 1st of July 1949, a year even before the Constitution of India was formalized, an act of parliament gave birth to ICAI. Today, ICAI counts itself amongst the oldest professional institutions in the country. Born as a regulator of accounting profession to aid the economic growth of the nation, it is the second largest professional accounting and finance body in the world in terms of members, with a current roster of about 2.5 lakh members and counting as I speak, with a presence of about 71,000 female chartered accountants and 3.5 lakh girl students, ICAI holistically carries the mission of transforming the nation from women's development to women-led development. During its eventful journey of 70 years, ICAI has become an integral part of the Indian economy, taking it on the path of the fastest growing economy in the world. With its emphasis on financial reform, ICAI radiates with shining milestones that stand as the acknowledged cornerstone of India's economic growth. In the year 1956, chartered accountants were recruited for the first time in the commercial audit branch of CA and G. Many of you may not be aware that many accountants were part of the Indian freedom struggle, like First Lady Auditor C. R. Seva Bhogam, who participated in non-cooperation movement on the call of the father of our nation, Mahatma Gandhiji. She was also imprisoned for a year. Recognizing ICI's strong regulatory framework, the High Courts acknowledged Council's strict disciplinary mechanisms in 1961. In 1964, the Council of the ICI submitted its pre-budget memorandum for the first time. The memorandum contained useful suggestions for reorientation of taxation policies and procedures to the Finance Ministry. The process was so helpful that it has been practiced ever since. In the 70s, the ICAI started rendering free advisory services to SMEs and small taxpayers on maintenance of accounts, tax paying and other financial matters. 
Not only did it enhance the financial literacy of businessmen and citizens, more importantly, it started the industrial growth in the country. It also collaborated with the government to enlarge the scheme of scholarships. With all humility, I wish to mention that in the year 1972, ICAI members had provided pro bono professional services to the heirs of the Javans and officers of the armed forces who sacrificed their lives in the war. Complete exemption from tuition and registration fee of the institute was also granted to the children of Amar Jawans and officers. The 80s saw widespread gloom in India's macroeconomic performance due to the prevailing conditions in the country. However, during the period between 1980 and 1990, the economy began to improve and growth rate accelerated. The government appointed CA members on various committees like boards of public sector undertakings and nationalized banks. The government also appointed ICAI as an expert and independent advisor on company law, fiscal and various other committees. The corporate sector, the public sector corporations, cooperative societies and public trusts were brought under the accounting discipline by legislation. In the 90s, sales tax audit was introduced in many states which was a direct result of ICAI's efforts to showcase the role played by the CA community. ICAI developed a research center in the form of a non-profit company to be named as Accounting Research Foundation. It was during this time that the government recognized the ICAI as the sole recommendatory body for setting accounting standards in the country. 2000 and onwards marked the period when many MRA, MOUs had been signed with many international bodies such as ICAEW, CPA Australia, Ireland, CICA, etc. ICAI was granted recognition by IGNU as a research center for the benefit of its members and employees to pursue doctoral research from IGNU. eSahayata was launched as an electronic service for members and students of ICAI to provide prompt services against their queries, complaints and grievances. In 2007, ICAI decided to recognize the CA leaders in industries which gave birth to a glittering awards function. In 2009, ICAI was awarded the Recognition of Excellence Award by the then President of India, Srimati Pratibha Patil. In the year 2014, the Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi, nominated ICAI for the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. Under the banner of Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, Swachh Vidyalaya Abhiyan was launched in the year 2015 to provide separate toilets for boys and girls in all government schools throughout the country. ICAI undertook a pilot study for the Indian Railways. The in-depth cost analysis helped in streamlining the running of the railways. Considering the importance of the legislation, namely black money, and the imposition of Tax Act 2015, CBDT decided to go all out and conduct workshops with ICAI to clarify any doubt the SSEs may have had. ICAI was chosen as the preferred institution to partner with the Government of India to create awareness and maximize the potential of the Income Declaration Scheme 2016. ICAI jointly with the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Commerce and Industry organized events at more than 470 locations across the country. It was attended by more than 42,000 citizens including chartered accountants, company secretaries, advocates and members from trade and industry. ICI's contribution to the scheme was acknowledged by Sri Arun Jaitley, Honorable Minister of Finance and Corporate Affairs. For the benefit of its members, ICAI established the Indian Institute of Insolvency Professionals of ICAI. ICAI extended its technical and infrastructural support towards the accounting reforms of various government offices. This meant moving from cash to a cruel system of accounting after assessing the tremendous positive impact on national financial reporting. It was also an important year for the Indian economy, with GST being touted as the game changer, leading to one nation, one tax. ICAI, as always, was there to partner the government towards effective and smooth implementation 
of GST throughout the nation. As a result, ICAI and CA members became a proud knowledge partner for GST success. For a clearer understanding of GST, ICAI carried out more than 3,000 programs benefiting more than 2.5 lakh participants. ICAI also established GST Sahayata desks all across the country to facilitate small businessmen, traders, shopkeepers and the public at large. ICAI has created a milestone by launching various incubation centers. In line with the Prime Minister's vision to support startups, ICAI is providing massive platforms to help CAs start their businesses. Not many people know that there is an accountancy museum in India or that the ICAI is the first accounting body in the world to start a digital accounting and insurance board or that there are three forensic labs in India to monitor financial bungling and frauds. With this, the ICAI is keeping its eyes and vision firmly on the future. The ICAI has a very strict code of ethics. Its motto is taken from the Upanishads, the Ayeshu Sapteshu Jagriti, which translates as the one that is awake in those that sleep. Here's to the guardians who stayed awake and protected us while the rest of us slept. I'd like to salute this institute for the work it has done in the past seven decades and wish them the very best in the years to come.